pleased to have this table, Tony and Chelsea Northrop. Thank you so much. Thank you. You for have a whole us. life on YouTube that everybody knows you to be the professional photographers and authors. We have a lot of ground to cover. We do. And we're gonna. This is leading up to the holiday season, so we're gonna talk about cameras. First of all. How did you get into photography? Because all your YouTube people, the tens of thousands, are going to want to know how did you get into it. Well, I probably get a head start on Chelsea just because of my age. But <laughs> I, I grew up in Texas where everything is flat and brown. And when Pflugerville, I first Pflugerville, right? Pflugerville, Texas. Yep. Raging That's suburb of Boston. <laughs> It is now. At the time, it was. It literally is German for farmer town, and that's exactly what it was. But I, I moved to New England, and I was so overwhelmed by just the beauty of it all, because you have trees that are more than six feet tall, and you have like cute little buildings that are 200 years old. Stuff you don't have in Texas. Yeah, we don't have scrub oaks here, right? Yeah, that's we, what they have in Texas. We just have brown, and then like cracks in the ground. <laughs> so I just wanted to, to capture it, to take pictures of it, and so you know, I bought a disposable camera, but it, it just wasn't doing it for me. And so then I, when I got a few bucks, to, uh, I, I, I bought a real camera and I got better pictures. But you know, you kind of chase that, oh, I didn't quite capture what I saw. It's not as beautiful as what I saw. So you just keep trying to get better and better and better. Better lens, better camera. How did you yeah. been, get into it, Chelsea? I love the arts. I've always been a musician. I've always tried painting, poetry, any kind of art, and I would try it. So I took a photography class in high school. Mr. Pavellas, I have him to thank. Oh, I love that. And I learned how to roll my own film, and I learned a lot about photography. So I liked it from that point, but when I met Tony, he took it to a whole new level. He was always documenting everything, so he taught me to be more disciplined with my hobby. And you're great at what you guys do. You've, you're thank writing you. your fourth book now. We have one of the books here, right? So you talk all about how to take pictures, what kind of a camera to use, and you really take people through the paces on YouTube. And people call in, and you have a big audience, you're telling me, in California, and yeah. Europe likes to watch you too. And it's every Thursday night at 5, is yes. that right? Yes, exactly. Yes. But I was telling Chelsea, I said, I think it should be later, so people can get home from work, and they can watch you. This is a good point, but then we have to stay up later. Well, that's true. That is true. <laughs> We're not so, all hardworking like you, Well, <laughs> yes, you are. Let's go through some of the pictures that you sent me and give folks an idea of what you take, what you're looking for. What is this? This is a wedding photo. We took this for my friend Liz. And the thing that I loved about the scene was the backlit grasses. And they were just glowing and they were so beautiful. So we backlit them, which means that the light was behind them. And that's why they have that ethereal glow about them. That's why everything is so golden and warm and beautiful. That's a trained eye because I would not get that photo at all. No, and it, it took a lot of work to find that particular spot. We took ah. a lot of shots before we got that one. But then we saw this field just as the sun was setting. And of course, they weren't just lounging there. You, <laughs> you have to pose them. them. Yes. Yeah. Now, you guys travel a lot. And you've yeah, been can. in Europe. And you also do stock photos as well, correct? Yes, we do. Yeah. Which people pay you for, and that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Where is this, and what's going on here? This is Machu Picchu in Peru. And this is a path leading up to the top of the mountain. Machu Picchu Mountain. Um, there were so many tourists there that day, and I saw this beautiful path lit up by the sun and the beautiful mountains in the background, and I just waited right there until I had a moment where there weren't any people on the scene. But see, that's what you know. You know to wait. Yes, it takes patience to get the shot that you, you want. You can't just get it. Yeah. You traveled there. You took a lot of... How many pictures do you take when you travel? Thousands? Oh, my goodness. Thousands. Yeah, definitely. Thousands of definitely pictures. Thousands, yeah. Where is this? That is in the Alps, driving from Switzerland to Italy. We don't know which town this is in, but we saw that and had to stop and get a picture. Yeah, and if, if there's a lesson here, it's to, to, to allow yourself to pace your own, yourself when you travel. So we could have taken a train, but then we wouldn't have been able to stop when we saw the steeple. I would have taken that picture and put the steeple right in the middle. You didn't. It's off to the right just a tad, which makes it more interesting. Right, and that's a technique called the rule of thirds. Tell me about the rule of thirds. You, you find whatever your subject is, whatever the, the most important part of it is. And if it's a portrait, it could be the eyes of the person. And you line it either at the, the top third or the bottom third or the right third or the left third. So you could draw a tic-tac-toe grid over your, over your frame. And then you'd put whatever the subject was over where those two lines intersected. See, I go, I have the symmetrical hang up that I have, I put it right in the middle. Now I just learned something. And that's okay. It's just that everybody puts it right in the middle. And therefore, those pictures are very common. 
Not only that, it limits where your eye moves in a picture. So if you have something to the side, it guides someone's eye around the photo. It makes the photo more dynamic. If you have someone dead in the center, then you kind of just lock contact with the subject and you don't explore as much. So it can make a photo more interesting to set it off into the side. How beautifully put. Speaking of beautiful, all right, who took this and picture? And the rule of thirds. We, we both took this picture together. There oh. is a lot more to this picture all than right, explain the what's going on here then. We had a model stand there and the dress does not have all of that fabric. This is a Photoshop composite. So when she was done posing, I had her take off the dress and get into her regular clothes. Then I took the dress and I waved it around and had Tony take a bunch of pictures of me waving the dress in the breeze to get it the way that I would want it to look. And then I took all of those pieces of the dress and I put them all together and photoshopped it so it looked like she had a long flowing dress. What do you guys, I mean I know you do a lot of photoshopping and you feel that that enhances pictures. You know, long ago it said, oh, you know, don't Photoshop, mm -hmm. but look at the beautiful things you now get with Photoshop. It's a different type of photography. It's kind of a controversial thing in photography. Some people are purists. They don't believe in cropping. They, don't, they only believe in using one focal length. That means they won't zoom or anything. And I see it as an art. I see it as a way to express myself. So if I'd like to use Photoshop to do that, then that's what makes me happy, artis happy artistically. Do you feel so the same way about that, Tony? Yeah, I think it's okay if somebody wants to create a, a picture by painting it. Of course, that's okay. And, and sometimes when you're uh, creating a picture, you decide you're going to take some pictures and then do some of it back on your computer by blending different things together. Everything in that photo is a photo. It's just made up of multiple different bits of photo that we placed here and there to, to kind of create a, a vision, something that we had in our mind. How long did it take you to, to do that? Hours? Hours. So you did all the photo yeah. And then you're starting to lose your light. Right? But then you can Photoshop it in? Yeah, oh. so the photo itself only took, maybe we were out there for 15, 20 minutes shooting, and then it's the post-processing that's so labor-intensive and took such a long time. It was longer for our model than us. She actually had the hardest job because it was very cold that morning and she was in slippers in, in the water. This was at Harkness uh, oh, just what time of year? a week ago. This was oh, a week ago. Yeah, it was a week very ago. cold. Well, I it hope was, you paid her handsomely. It was like 36 <laughs> degrees Fahrenheit in oh the water. Gosh. So she had to stand there and act like she was thrilled about it. Well, that's <laughs> what she was model, right? Yeah, yeah. You just exactly. that. Yeah. I told her it's not as glamorous as it looks because I actually met her at a restaurant in Old Saybrook and said, you're beautiful. You have you to just call plucked me. Her oh, out yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like a creep, you know, come well, going up to this young well, she girl. She could be world thing. famous because of that gorgeous photo. I hope so. Is that a stock photo? No, it will be though. Ah. And okay. we'll be using it for the cover of our next book too. Oh, so our Photoshop book. that's how mm. gorgeous it is. And where will we find your stock photos? Oh, any any stock agency, pretty much. So iStock, Photolia, Shutterstock. Uh, th mm. There are a lot of different agencies where we sell And one photos. can make a living off of uh, stock photos. Uh, people have. We, yeah. The way we're using it, we couldn't, but people certainly <laughs> do. But certainly, you know, I, I know that too. I'm looking for a photo, and I can use it if I pay for it yes, because yeah. it's mine. Then. All right. What else do we have as far as uh, photos? Machu Picchu again. Yes. Yes. Who caught this one? I did. And again, there were a lot of people, uh, there are these baby llamas at Machu Picchu and the tourists chased them around. So again, I had to just squat and hope that this llama walked in front of me where there weren't any people. So I was patient and again, it paid off. And I think I got about three shots in before someone reached their hand in or before he walked away. So. Absolutely stunning. I, I think you were there for maybe 20 minutes. Yep. Just to give you an idea of how much patience it takes. You find oh, the yeah. shot and then you wait for it. But you know, we traveled thousands of miles to get that shot. So sure. it's worth another 20 minutes. Right, and worth some money too. <laughs> Who grabbed this one? Because you got it just at the right time. Uh, that's me, but we were side by side. I just happened to luck out. She had a camera too, and I think it didn't focus. Oh, you were so gracious. Um, Look at that. This <laughs> he is yielded to you. Old Lyme, I think. Yes. Is that right? Uh -huh. um, yeah, there's a bridge there where the osprey just gather. And you put the sun to your back so that the sun is illuminating the bird when it does hit. And you watch the wind because all birds will take off into the wind. It's just easier for them to fly. So you wait and you wait and you position yourself so you can get the right angle on the bird. And then finally this osprey catches a fish and takes off, but I'm in the right spot and I have the right gear and I just keep snapping pictures. But we were out there uh, for, well, we've taken hundreds of thousands of wildlife shots that particular day. On a typical day, I might take more than a thousand shots. And this is the one over many years that's my favorite. How many pixels is that? Uh, okay. That was taken with an older camera, 5D Mark II, which is, I think, 22 megapixels. Okay, so that's going to be a gorgeous shot anyway. Yeah. And what do we have left in the bin down south somewhere? 
Yes, this is Oak Alley, Alley, Alley Plantation right. in New Orleans, or outside of New Orleans. That's centered, Chelsea, is it not? Because of the arch? Yes, okay. yes, but we have natural framing, so there are other compositional elements. So you have the rule of thirds, and then you have framing or all sorts of things you can do. And so you a can centered composition, a square composition, is good for making things seem stately. Hmm. If you were to put this off center, it would seem more casual. Maybe artsy, maybe. More, maybe mm -hmm. more artsy, but for this building, I want it to be stately. It's got those big columns and these powerful trees, so dead center made sense to me. There's so much to think about when you're taking a picture. I just, you know, <laughs> take out my Instamatic and go. You, you just take it one day at a time. <laughs> right. Speaking of which, so we have a lot of gadgets on this table. Let's go through them because holidays are coming, as we yeah. said, and, and I'm curious to know about this. So tell me about this camera, Chelsea. What is it? How much does it cost? So this is a Samsung, and it's under $200. It's about 165 I think, right? Yeah. Um, and this camera is a step up from your smartphone. I know a lot of people use their smartphone. I think smartphones are great, but they can limit you in some ways. They don't mm -hmm. take great portraits, and they don't have as good of dynamic range, which means the light won't look as good with your smartphone. So this is a great alternative for someone that wants better pictures and they want to print them because they'll look better in print, they're a better resolution. Uh, it's a good option. I don't and think it's lightweight. It's very light. Speaking yes. of iPhones, I, I skipped over this. So what are some tricks? Everybody's got a smartphone mm -hmm. and we all, you know, we're grabbing, you know, either they're doing selfies or whatever. Yeah. What are tricks with a smartphone that we don't know about when we're taking pictures? I see great smartphone photography. A lot of photographers put it down and I, I love it. I think it's great that photography is so accessible to everyone. The good tricks are the ones that we were just telling you about. Composition, use the rule of thirds, know when to center your subject, know when to put them off center. Light is so important. You can never get a good picture without the right light. So you have the best light during the golden hour, which is early in the morning when the sun is coming up. Which I'm not up, okay. <laughs> and sunset, luckily, <laughs> for us night owls. That's what I like. And you get that warm golden light, and it's flattering. It's flattering on everything. So. And then if you're like my daughters, they go filter, 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 and then, you know, goes you on the Instagram, right? Yeah, right? In there, yeah. It goes right. Okay, next camera. So a little, a little bit further up the money chain is, is which one? Tony, would you like to talk about this Olympus here? Sure, this here? is the Olympus EM10, and it's just one of our favorite cameras. Uh, you can pick up a kit with the lens for about 450 bucks, but the, the biggest trick here is the lens will come off, and you can put on a different lens. Pretty idiot-proof, too, for, for the novice. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. It has a fully auto mode, so it'll work just like your smartphone. You can, it has a touch screen, so you can touch it to focus mm -hmm. if you want to. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know anything more about it, but if you feel like learning more, it, it, it can do anything that you can imagine. Okay, Very both of them camera. shoot uh, digital video? Oh yes, yes, okay. they yeah. both take great video. All right, now this is the next step up. It's got more lenses, so yes. somebody tackle that one. It's a Canon. Mm -hmm. That's the Canon yeah. T6i, T6i, and okay. it's what they call a DSLR. A little heavier. A little so heavier, this is yeah. a serious camera, and it's also got the interchangeable lenses, but I recommended this camera because it can take pictures of sports, and so many people want to take pictures of their kids' basketball game or soccer game. And how do you do that to grab action? Well, you put your camera into continuous mode, and uh, usually if it doesn't have a sports mode, you'll put it into shutter priority mode, and then set a shutter speed that's fast enough to freeze the action, like 1 2 50th of a second. Uh -huh. And then just hold down that shutter, because it's not going to get every single shot in focus, so you'll take lots of shots and just find that, that one decisive moment where the foot is contacting the ball just perfectly. Yeah. I was telling Chelsea, we live in an age now where we're taking thousands of pictures, and they're all being stored on our computer, right? and we're not printing them. Yeah. We need to start printing some pictures. We do, we do, and we, we advocate that. We print our own pictures because you get to enjoy them, but also there's something really nice you about having... You have your dark room at home? No, we don't, we don't develop them. Okay. We just get them printed. We use mpix.com mm -hmm. online. They have really nice prints. CVS, Walmart, the prints aren't as nice. Um, so we go to mpix and we have them done, and we, we keep them on our walls, and we recommend everyone does that. If you're a photographer and you're trying to practice, you're living with your photo. You're seeing your work. You're seeing your improvements every day where you live, they're becoming a part of your life. And that's how you get better. That's how you get better, but also so many people share their photos on Facebook and then boom, they're off your wall. Right. You don't see them again, you go to search for them, you, you don't know how or you can't find them. So you should you should be printing your pictures, you should be enjoying them and keeping them. And right. especially with the photo books you can get now, they're so beautiful, they're right. not that expensive. Well, I'm gonna try to do that. Now we've got <laughs> something cardboard here, what is that? It's Google Cardboard, and it, it's kind of a trick, and can I... Yeah, absolutely. So what you'll do is you'll open this up, and then you'll put your phone in here. And uh, your phone might be a little thick, but if you take the case off, it'll fit, fit on right. just perfectly. And then you can close it up, and now you can hold it up to your eyes, 
and you can see either 3D content or 360 degree content. Where By you just move taking a, so let's say I take a picture and I put the phone in there, I can see around this picture. Well, you need some 360 content. So ah. there's lots of that on the web. So you can get immersive VR video of people swimming with sharks or flying through the air, and it's it's so crazy to and be able to look around, around and like see this it. With it. <laughs> Our daughter, there there are lots of horror movies on YouTube that oh, are great. this kind of 360 thing. So somebody can be sneaking up behind you and you don't know it. It's so funny to watch a kid watching this and they're spinning around oh looking for gosh. the person that's attacking them. Yeah. But if you do want to make your own 360 content, uh, this is a gadget. This is fun. This is a gadget. This is the Rico Theta S, and it records in 360 degrees with these two lenses. So it records the whole world, everything up and down and then you can watch it back so on So the that. lenses move around? There's no, one in the front and one in the back. There's fixed, it's just got the two lenses What does it there. cost? It's about $365. So okay. it's not that, not that much for such an amazing technology. Right, and but it, Two it's years light, ago, a 360 light. camera would have cost you $20,000. So to get it for $365, I'm fairly amazed. Good thing we waited, right? Yeah. <laughs> and this is, this is really fun too. What, what is this? This is a gadget, another gadget. This is a gadget. This is the DJI Osmo, and it's a 4K video camera with that kind of interesting trick. You can see it's got like a robot head on it. Well, you can do that, that tracking shot that you get in movies where somebody's walking and you're following them. So you could use it for things like sports that you might use a GoPro for. And it's for. got a stabilizer in it, right? Yeah, it's very stable. So mm -hmm. it's just like having a, an expensive Steadicam. But uh, for about $650, it's, it's way less expensive than trying to get a and real this is light. Steadicam. Oh, it's very light. Yeah, it, it's very so light. The battery lasts a long time. And Move it around; it's going to grab get the picture. silky smooth video that will look totally pro when you put it on. Have YouTube. you watched your old home movies recently? Every I one have. is so shaky, yes. right? I thought it was so romantic. Now I can shoot good with it. You know, it's going to be an expensive uh, holiday. And then you you brought something for oh, the this one. This one's so much fun. This is a Polaroid camera, and you'd be amazed because our kids now they have iPhones, they have iPads, they have so much technology at their fingertips. And then you show them a Polaroid camera, and it blows their minds that they can get a picture right away. This would make a great stocking stuffer. What is this? A hundred dollars? It's a hundred dollars, yeah. And what's very fun about this one is it also has a memory card, so you don't just get your printed out copy. You can also have a digital copy. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. It just comes right out of yeah, the Yeah, and I think this would be fun for weddings. So we've just, uh, this is the tip of the iceberg with yeah. you two. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. Where do we find you on YouTube? Uh, you can just Google Tony Northrop. Northrop. Okay. Yep, yeah, and it'll come up. And how many shows have you done? Uh, oh, my goodness. 50 shows, I think. Okay. And, and yeah, we do three shows every week. Live so from the basement. Two recorded shows and one live. One show yeah. live, two pre recorded. I love that. Yeah. Chelsea yeah. and Tony, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you Thanks, for having Anne. us. You're welcome. Spend all night kissing and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution. I find the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep dark in the grocery store of a mind. Just to save time, I skip right ahead to the last ride. The harder we look, the less we can see. Don't you know, you know, you know that you 